oscillators are very important and there's many different types of oscillators and I didn't have to look very far to find one in this clock. Now this one is quartz crystal controlled and this right here is the crystal. I also hooked up a scope to this circuit so we could see what's going on. And on this pin we've got about 32K. And on this pin, as you can see it's digital, it's about 260 cycles. And on this pin, it's about 2 seconds. But the oscillator that I want to talk about in this video is the tank circuit. It's used in all kinds of places and of course uh, most of my radios have tank circuits. I do have a few radios that are crystal controlled but most of them are controlled by a tuned tank circuit. Here is a tank circuit. The coil is on the left and the capacitor is on the right. And I'm going to start with the capacitor being charged this way. And the blue arrows show the flow of electrons. Now the capacitor is charged and it is going to discharge through the coil. And when it does that, it's going to start building up a magnetic field with a particular north and south orientation. And as the capacitor keeps discharging, the magnetic field increases until the capacitor can no longer discharge any more electrons. Now at this point the magnetic field is going to collapse but when it does it's going to cut across the coils in the opposite direction changing the polarity and start charging that capacitor in the opposite direction and opposite polarity. Now when the magnetic field can collapse no longer, the capacitor is charged and it will start to discharge, but notice that the electrons are still flowing in the same direction and the magnetic field is being increased, but in the opposite north and south polarity. Now this magnetic field will continue to grow until the capacitor can no longer discharge anymore and now the magnetic field is going to start to collapse and it's going to charge that capacitor in the other direction changing the polarity of the capacitor. Let's watch this again but a little faster. So what we end up with is this, a circuit that continuously 
charges and discharges the capacitor in opposite directions, positive and negative. But of course, uh, this circuit right here would run down uh, because of the inefficiency of the capacitor and the coil and the resistance in the circuit. So a tank circuit is going to require a little bit of positive feedback to counteract the inefficiencies and the resistance to keep that oscillator oscillating. Here is a typical diagram of a radio. It happens to be a tube radio. And if we take a look on the left side, we'll see the converter. It's also a tank oscillator for this radio. And the tank coil is connections A and B. And across that are two capacitors. C3 is the uh, tuning capacitor and C1 is the trimmer for that capacitor. Now the output of this tank circuit is fed through that 100 micro microfarad capacitor or 100 picofarad capacitor C5 up to the control grid of that 12 BE6. So that tank circuit is impressing upon the control grid uh, the frequency of that tank circuit. Now we had mentioned that we need a little bit of energy to keep that tank circuit going and that happens because of the current that flows through C and D. So the tank circuit is controlling the control grid and the coil C and D is configured in such a way that it will feed back positively to the tank circuit the energy needed to keep this oscillator oscillating. I hope you found this information useful and thanks for watching.